Welcome to episode 165 of the Women of the Military podcast. This week, like last week, is another advice episode, and this episode will cover the last few podcast episodes with women sharing their story from season three. Next week, I am going to highlight the most popular podcast episodes for season three, and then I'll be taking a break for the holidays. So I hope you enjoyed this week's roundup of advice, and if you really enjoyed these types of episodes, this is the fifth time we've done this episode. You can check out episode 100, episode 138, episode 162, episode 164, and this one. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. You're listening to Season 3 of the Women of the Military Podcast. Here you will find the real stories of female service members. I'm Amanda Huffman. I am an Air Force veteran, military spouse, and mom. I created Women of the Military Podcast in 2019 as a place to share the stories of female service members past and present with the goal of finding the heart of the story while uncovering the triumphs and challenges women face while serving in the military. If you want to be encouraged by the stories of military women and be inspired to change the world, keep tuned for this latest episode of Women of the Military. Women of the Military podcast would like to thank Sabio Coding Bootcamp for sponsoring this week's episode. Sabio Coding Bootcamp is a top-ranked coding bootcamp that is 100% dedicated to helping smart and highly motivated individuals become exceptional software engineers. Visit their website at www.sabio.la to learn how you may be able to use your GI Bill of Benefits to train at Sabio. Your tuition and monthly BAH stipend may be paid during your training period. They are also 100% committed in helping you find your first job in tech. So don't forget to head over to www.sabio.la to learn more. Women of the Military Podcast would also like to thank Grunt Style for sponsoring this week's episode. I have been really impressed with the quality of the clothing items I received from Grunt Style. The long sleeve shirt has become my new favorite shirt to wear as it's gotten colder. And this long sleeve t-shirt is great because it fits so well around my wrist, which normally I don't like the way long sleeve shirts feel, so it's an extra compliment. But I really love their clothing and I love how they are an American veteran owned and operated company with the motto of pride in self, military, and country. And they also have more than 200 veterans on staff. So if you're still looking for gifts this holiday season for either yourself or someone that you love, you can get an additional 10% off your first order using my discount code Huffman. So go to gruntstyle.com and use my code Huffman, H-U-F-F-M-A-N at checkout off your first order of any items. That's gruntstyle.com and use the code Huffman. And now let's get started with this week's interview. Definitely worthwhile to consider, especially if you look back at the reasons I did between, you know, adventure and scholarship and service. And your scholarship doesn't mean just ROTC. There's, you know, tuition assistance for all ranks and patriotism, a sense of camaraderie. I'm still so, have such great friends in the, in the military and they, oddly enough, end up stopping by even way down here a lot, which I love. And uh, definitely it's like a buoy. You always know you have somebody. So I think you know, from that emotional side, but I guess the advice I would give for um, people starting, you know, that have already made the choice they're going in is something I learned a little bit, probably the hard way. And as I went, and I'm probably always still learning it is to set boundaries and then choose when you enforce them. You know, you don't always have to be the person who's like, you know, this is my boundary in front of everyone or and whatnot, you know, pick and pick and choose uh, how you establish boundaries between subordinates peers, bosses, etc. But don't be afraid to set those. When you don't think constantly feeling those feelings, anxiety or whatever you want to call it that goes with it because you didn't say anything. And then when it happens again, it just kind of worsens, will eat away at you. And especially when you're deployed. I mean, something I think I talked about in the post that I think you noticed is as a woman in the military, I felt very isolated when I deployed a lot. Sometimes I'd have other women there. Sometimes I would only have them there for a little bit. There'd be times, especially when I was in Afghanistan, where I'd be in a tent by myself and all the guys are all having fun. And and I was in the tent by myself. And if I wasn't 
60% extrovert, <laughs> that would probably be okay. But I always kind of had a little bit of maybe FOMO or, or just kind of got lonely. So boundaries and then pick and choose when you set them, that you should set them. No matter what rank you are and what rank they are, most people will appreciate that. I would say do it. And I would say take the time to really research what you're interested in as far as like an occupation or even type of military service. Every branch is so different. And depending on what you're looking for depends on the branch that you should join, really. And I honestly feel like you shouldn't fully rely on what your recruiter tells you. And I love recruiters. I have friends who are recruiters, but I think that everybody should find somebody who has served in the military and talk to them through your network of friends. Somebody knows somebody who served. And I know any veteran or active duty is willing to sit down and answer questions of somebody who wants to join. And they will give you real, honest, you know, unedited answers. And I think that's so important because had I you know, done some research on the jobs that I eventually worked my way through, I probably would have had a smoother start had I known some of the things I knew later on. I think it's important to look forward to what you want your future to look like when you're considering military service, because being a single soldier or being like a married soldier who doesn't have children is a very different life from trying to give birth or conceive children through artificial reproductive technology, and then grow and raise those children and be able to be as involved as you would like to be. Um, Because the military really does demand a lot of you. It gives you so much in return, the benefits for the rest of your life and the community and the skills. There's so, so much value, but you, you need to have a good idea of what you're sacrificing on a personal level. And so talking to other people who had like the MOS or the job that you want to do and having a clear idea of where you want to go as far as enlisted or officer. I think that's really important. I want to keep the recruiter in me out of this. (laughs) So of course, I'm going to suggest do your research, look into every branch, figure out what you want to do. And don't be afraid to take the leap. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself. One contract in the military is not very much time. Six years is only about 7% of your life. It's not much. And it's a fantastic experience to have to grow your confidence, to grow your, your knowledge base, to grow your leadership skills. You can't go wrong in the military, I believe. And I think if you're able to, absolutely take that jump, take the leap, challenge yourself and really give it your all. So the military is cool because you can pick a job depending on how you score on your ASVAB, this magical test that deems how much aptitude you have in one area over another. We'll say it that way because some people say, I got a 34, so I'm dumb. doesn't mean you're dumb. You just have an aptitude in a specific area. Maybe you don't have as many options, but training can rectify that. So don't ever let that hold you back. That that can always be retaken and redone later. And every branch of service has that option. Don't don't ever let somebody tell you that you can't because they're lying. They're trying to sell you something else. But certainly I would say spend time trying to figure out what you really like, but definitely take the time to set yourself up to do the civilian equivalent if there is one. If there is not one, you need to spend the time to figure out basically what I want to do, what is the qualifications and the education for somebody that has that type of position, and how do I get there and make a plan? Because you're more likely to follow through with it if you write it down and create a a process and a system rather than just waking up every day and being like, I'm here today and this is what I'm going to do because I feel like it. You know, there's a lot of days I don't feel like doing a lot of things. So (laughs) unless you're a very special type of person, most of us can't just do that. I would give two things for advice. Number one, at the end of the day, all you have to do is be you. Don't try to force somebody else's leadership style on you. Don't try to conform to a vision that somebody has. Be you, whatever you that needs to take. I mean, it it sounds cliche. It sounds cheesy, but people gravitate towards the people who are centered in who they are and who genuinely care for others. And if the military is for you, then that's awesome. And we want you here. We want you to come here. That's the mindset we want. But just 
be you. Don't, don't let anybody else tell you what a good leader is. You can take advice and you can look at people and be like, well, I really like that version of leadership, but you don't have to fully adopt it. You can be like, Hey, I'm going to take these bits and pieces and form this as a part of who I am. You get to own who you are. And as long as that is authentic and centered around who you want to be, you will do very well here uh, because people will see that you are genuine And the second part of that is just come here with the mindset that you want to serve others and that you want to be in the military, have an understanding that you are going to be a good follower and you are going to be a good servant leader. I always tell people that like they'll ask, how do you get to a higher level leadership position? And I was like, at the end of the day, just focus on caring for other people. If you just focus on that care, the rest will follow into place. That, that is all a good leader needs to be able to do is care for others. And then that care will motivate them and guide them to work hard, to be competent, to have good character. But it all comes down to that willingness to be a good servant leader. Um, so those are the two biggest things that I can give to women is just be authentically you and care for other people to the best of your ability. My first thing would be don't allow the naysayers to dictate how much effort you were going to put in. So I know when I was a senior in high school and I went to, I went to just an informational meeting and I was speaking to an old grad. And one of the things that he told me was, you're not going to be able to get all A's. Like nobody's going to be able to get a 4 L. You're not going to be able to do it. So it's not even worth it. Don't even try Just focus on other things. And I'd say, had I listened to him and not, put in the effort to even attempt to achieve that, I definitely would not have been able to do as much as I've done here. And I don't think I would have enjoyed West Point nearly as much. Um, I'd say putting in the effort is part of what makes this place enjoyable because it's about challenging yourself. So kind of all of the naysayers that are telling you maybe, you know, don't go to West Point. Or I had people telling me, hey, don't go to West Point. You know, you're a woman, you're a black female. It's maybe that's not the right place for you. Go somewhere else. Like Colin said, if it's for you, we want you here. So stick with your gut and and trust your instinct. If this is where you feel you're supposed to be, do whatever it takes to get here. Because once you get here, there are people who will gather around you and support you and appreciate you and cheer you on to be your best. And I guess the second thing is just come, come ready to work. (laughs) I mean, like we said, like it's, it's going to push you sometimes more than you are expecting, more than you think you can know that there are people there to lift you up, but be ready to do 97, 98, 99% of that work and get that extra push along the way. Yeah. I like that question. Um, I think it's really important to know you are capable and do anything you put your mind to. I know I would not have dreamed of being a paratrooper and being able to be as fit as I was. So I think the important thing to realize is that Sometimes we have self-imposed limitations. And I think when you lift those limitations, you realize how truly powerful you are and how much potential you really have. I think, you know, it's not just a physical thing, it's a mental thing. And it is a mental game, you know, beating off the negative thoughts and being able to be positive and have positive affirmations. I would say choose your career path wisely. If you do go down a path that's not right for you, do what you can to change it because I think it's really important to enjoy what you do and be inspired in your role and move towards what you want as well. Do your research before enlisting to make sure you are suited. I think a lot of women are trying to prove points and going into roles to prove a point rather than being called to that position. I think that doesn't last. So uh, I think it's good that you can prove yourself and prove your points and things like that. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is make sure you're suited to that role and it's it's your calling rather than doing it for the wrong reasons. Focus on a greater vision and what your service does for the peace mission. So I think you don't go into the military to really to go and destroy anything. You go there to create peace on on the planet, for example. And a lot of a lot of people don't see it that way. But I think when it comes down to, like I've mentioned before, the ultimate reason you're there is so that people that you're at war with people, but you're also creating peace for those people that those people have 
been hurting or harming. So be prepared and be strong in body and mind, I think is a really important way to approach things. Take the time to do the physical activity, take the time to develop your mind. And whilst you're in the in the infrastructure or the hierarchical system, still maintain your own sense of identity at the same time where possible, whilst, you know, embracing the fact that you do have to adapt and you have to be able to take orders and do the right thing. And lastly, I think ensure you speak to others and seek mentoring in the process and do it ongoing. The thing that was missing for me when I was enlisted was the mentoring and people to help support to rise, raise me up. I was kind of felt like I was in it alone. So always seek mentors and people that can really help you to move forward and to gain the positions that you really want to gain, but do it in a way that is sustainable as well. So my advice would be don't go open contract for one. I made that mistake. Y'all can learn from me. See, don't do that. Go in knowing exactly what you want and don't be afraid to ask for it. I will say this. No one is going to give you anything. You're going to have to take it. You're going to have to earn it. So go into this knowing exactly what you want and exactly where you want to be. Like have a plan. Like in one year, and this is basically one year after you hit the fleet, this is where I want to be. This is where I want to be in three years. This is where I want to be in five years. Because if you don't, they're going to tell you where you're going to be in one year, three years and five years. And, you know, and if you go open contract like I did, they're going to tell you what kind of job you're going to have. Now, it, it worked out for me because Motor T, I, I did hate it, but I was able to recover and say, OK, let me get a different job. Let me do something else. But mainly a lot of people get out because they hate their jobs. So don't be open contract. If you have to take the ASVAB again, do so. It's OK. So just have a plan and know what you want. I would say don't hesitate to reach out to strangers if you want to hear unfiltered views, right? If you have family who are telling you about their experiences, awesome. Do it, but reach out to some people who might inspire you. Like go on LinkedIn, find some military women who have a path or a story that really intrigues you and don't hesitate to reach out to them. I promise you at least half will respond back. Like, yeah, we're all busy. But if someone writes me to go like, can you just tell me a little bit more about your path? I am absolutely going to find time to talk to that young lady. So don't be afraid to reach out to people, even if they're strangers. If you want to know how they got to where they're at or how you might be able to engage in a path that looks like that, reach out, send, send a cold note, you know, be brave, be bold and do it. I would say a lot of self-reflection a lot, like really tap into you first, like take away if there are other factors coming your way, like say it's, I need to figure out how to get to school and have it paid for. No, stop that. There are so many things out there for you and, and do not, do not do it because of that, but tap into it. Like, is it because you want to be a leader and you'd like to do that in a military setting? Is it because you really like the idea of the structure and learning how to be a disciplined, very respectful person that you will then become a mentor to other people? Then yes, if it's a check mark on those last things, then you follow your heart after you continue to do that self-reflection and just really identify what is it that I really want? Because if what you really want is like, you'd like to paint and sell paintings, then by golly, you do not let all those different fear factors come your way. You figure out how you get to paint for life. But if, like I said, if, if it's the military and the habit being a female and wanting to have an effect on other people through a leadership role in a military setting, then heck yeah. So follow your heart, do that self-reflection and find exactly what it is that you think is going to bring you happiness. And that might change down the road and that's okay too. I would say seriously consider it as an option and look at what is available to you. And as far as a school or an enlistment bonus or options, like make sure you are looking at the whole picture. And if you are feeling overwhelmed, bring someone with you or talk with someone who has experience, who has been through it, or is at least willing to talk to you about their experiences. 
And you don't necessarily have to take first thing that comes up and also just be prepared to be tough and stand your ground and have boundaries about your physical space, what you will and will not tolerate when you're um, in the military, you know, really seriously look at what you are trying to do, because there are some great programs out there. It might make sense for you to go to college first and then try to be commissioned. You know, there are options and it can be a great way out if you are looking for a way to be independent and experience life on your somewhat on your own terms. And if, it, if you're coming out of something chaotic, it can be a way to give some structure and order to your life, which can really carry you forward and benefit you in the long run. That is a great question. I will tell every woman that is thinking about joining the military, I would say make a conscious decision that you can live with and not regret. Amanda, I am a proponent for now at this particular juncture in our lives. And it's like looking back in hindsight, but really sometimes it's okay to get advice from friends and family to see what their perspective is on a situation, but also again, sit quietly with yourself and make the decision. Because if you have, if someone's living their life through you vicariously, you will make a decision that you will later regret. So my best advice, sit quiet with yourself and make the decision. Young women who are considering going into military service, I think the biggest advice I would give them is to be ready, to be mentally and physically ready, to be willing to step up and outside of their box for the greater good. But at the same time, the reward will be so great and the confidence that will be instilled will be enormous um, and unmatchable, I believe, in most cases. So if if you're considering joining, I I would ask that you always not be afraid to ask the hard questions. You only know what you know. Find someone to talk to. Find a mentor, actual recruiter that link you up with somebody. Make sure you get the right information before you go in. The better prepared you are, the better that that transition from civilian to military will be. And then you look at it from a positive aspect. Know why you're joining. Know why you're joining. Don't just feel like it's my way out of my situation because there are other ways out. Like the military doesn't have to be your only way. It's probably like the most enticing, but figure out what you want, what you want out of it. It's funny because we all join the military thinking that we're going to get out retired. The statistics show that most people don't retire. And in fact, that's why they change the retirement system. So like knowing that going in, even at 18, like just know, like if I'm only in for this enlistment, what am I going to do? I would say absolutely. I mean, when I first got in, the military was a harder place for women. But over the 30 years I've been in, it's amazing all of the progress that's been made and the progress that's continued to make every day. And you've seen Admiral Howard, a four-star female admiral. You've seen Admiral Ty, a three-star admiral. I mean, there's lots and lots of examples of people who make the top command master chiefs and force master chiefs who are women. So there's no barrier in the military. And we just had a, uh, a female uh, go get through SEAL training, right? And so I'm really happy, I think, now that we don't have to say there's firsts in the Navy anymore. It's now normal. It's, you know, these are just great officers, chiefs, and enlisted women who are just officers, chiefs, and enlisted. They don't have to call them out as being male or female anymore. They're just great patriots serving their country. And it's great we're at the point where, you know, we don't have to worry about being the first of this, the first of that anymore. It's just the way it is. And we got great professionals doing it and they just happen to be women. Oh my goodness. I have so much advice. I think the biggest one would be, you know, when I think about myself, when I was about to join, like I was so apprehensive and nervous and, you know, we all want to do well and be successful. And sometimes you might question like whether it's the right choice or not, but I would just say like, you know, what's best for you in your life. If you feel like joining is the right thing for you, like, dive in head first and enjoy the ride. That's something that I didn't really do very well the first 15 years of my career. I was so busy moving from achievement to achievement because, you know, everything is promotion focused and evaluation focused. And I never took time to like be present and look around and be like, whoa, I'm in Iraq working with special operations, doing stuff I see in the movies, like protecting life and saving lives is the hope, right? Like I never, I never did that. And so I would just say like, be 
present, like build relationships with the people around you. Don't fear or feel like you don't fit in because your unique qualities is exactly what the mission needs to get done, whether someone tells you that's true or not. Like even when I was running informants, I thought being a female and brown was a disadvantage, but actually it allowed me to go into places in Iraq that my white male counterparts couldn't get into. And so that was a really big asset to the mission, but I had to get over my own ego to be able to do that, right? So believe in yourself. Like there are no mistakes in how you were created and what you were meant to do and just enjoy it is what I would recommend. I'd say just do it. Like just do it. I mean, I personally don't see a downfall. It's not for everyone and you'll find out if it's for you or not when you start the process. But to me, there's no downside of it. And if you don't know what you want to do with your life, which I didn't at the time when I joined, you at least get your hand held. You know, I didn't have to pay for or think about health insurance. I didn't have to worry about where I was going to live or how I was going to eat because the army just takes care of it for you. You get food, you get a place to sleep, you have free health care. So at least you're taken care of and you get to learn some cool experiences along the way. So to me, there's no downside. Um, unless you're just a person that, you know, it isn't for everybody, you know, and if you're that kind of person, then you'll find out and at least you gave it a shot. But yeah, just do it would be my advice. If you're considering joining the military, I say go Air Force. I say do it, jump in, go at it and give it your best. I have probably been getting out of the military since I got in. And here I am 22 years in the military. For me, there were times when I had to recommit to the service and I didn't think I could do it. I thought the challenges were too much and I just wasn't able to see a path. That is where good advice and good counsel, good mentors becomes very important. I have had several bosses sit down with me and help craft solutions, help me see possibilities that I didn't see were there for me to stay in the military and succeed. And these were often male bosses who didn't completely understand my working mom life but were willing to help me figure out how I could continue to serve the country. And here I am, 22 years later, and a colonel in the Air Force. I say go for it. You'd be surprised at what you can do. It's not going to be easy, but working isn't easy. Sometimes life isn't easy. But the military is a great way to shine and to showcase all that you can do and to help your family. And here I am, 22 years later, and if there's ever a way that I can help you in the Air Force, I'm happy to do it. I say go for it. Go do it. My answer is do it. Please, please do it. I like to tell the story that when I was newly commissioned, I asked my little sister, who is seven years younger than I am, if she would ever want to join the military. And she specifically said, no, I don't want to be like you. And of course, we all laughed at that because, I mean, that's what little sisters are for. But now, currently about what, 12 years later, she is an army captain and veterinarian stationed in Japan. She discovered that the army was a great way to help her pay her veterinarian degree. So she joined the army and now she gets to see the world more than I ever did. And it's one of those, you can do anything for a few years and then decide it isn't for you. And I I tell both of my kids, I have a a son and a daughter. I'm really hoping I can get them both to at least try it because it was so worth it for ROTC to pay for a part of the scholarship and a book stipend and a monthly stipend just to get paid. And when I graduated, it was the middle of the recession. And I had friends who could not find work in the engineering field because nobody was hired. And I went right into a job the next day. There was no stress. It was so easy to just commission. And they said, go work here. And I said, okay. I loved it. People always ask me if you knew what was going to happen, would you do it again? Absolutely. I'm a stronger person. I didn't realize how strong I was until it was my only option. It was an amazing experience. I mean, I remember being in Peru and going on a tour of the Incan ruins and standing there where they did a human sacrifice. And I'm like, well, that's kind of creepy. I mean, I got to see these things, you know, that you read about in your history books, you know, the Panama Canal and you're going in the rainforest and you just as a kid, you know, you're like, wow, that's awesome. But I never thought that I would be standing at the Panama Canal or at the Incan ruins or talking to an alpaca. It was a amazing experience all the way around with just a couple of bumps in the road. I would tell them to do it. I think it is a lot more female friendly now. Even like when you're thinking about if you did decide you want to stay in and you wanted to have a child and and all that, it's a lot more female friendly. You you get more time to recover. You get a little bit more of the advantages than I would have had when I was coming in. 
And I think it is definitely something that you can do. It gives you a really great opportunity to get some education under your belt while you're in. And then you can use your GI Bill when you're out to do that and you get all kinds of benefits. And it's a really great jump start. And it lets you help people in a way that not everybody can do. Because not everybody can join the military, but if you think you can do that, you need to go see your recruiter and sign up and give it a shot. to this week's episode of Women of the Military Podcast. Do you love all things Women of the Military Podcast? Become a subscriber so you never miss an episode and consider leaving a review. It really helps people find the podcast and helps the podcast to grow. Are you still listening? You could be a part of the mission of telling the stories of military women by joining me on Patreon at patreon.com slash women of the military or you can order my book Women of the Military on Amazon. Every dollar helps to continue the work I am doing. Are you a business owner? Do you want to get your product or service in front of the Women of the Military podcast audience? Get in touch with the Women of the Military podcast team to learn more. All the links on how you can support Women of the Military podcast are located in the show notes. Thanks again for listening and for your support.